All right, so just going to do a little bit of shooting to see what it's like. Hey folks, welcome to Maverick Gunworks channel. I'm going to open up a box for our brand new Springfield XDM in 10 millimeter and uh, give it a once over. We've got our typical Springfield pouch that uh, is good for storage of this rascal. And here is our firearm, the XDM. This one in 10 millimeter, four and a half inch barrel. I really like this Springfields, if you don't know that yet. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, some of my favorite firearms in the world. Um, and we're gonna go over here in just a minute and give you some reasons why. But uh, in our box, we have 15 round capacity for 10 millimeter. You got a lot of firepower there, folks. Another magazine with 15 rounds capacity here. Also a couple of different back strap uh, what is it, palm swell attachments, I guess they call them. So you can have, uh, those are replaceable, interchangeable for the size of your hand, size of the grip you want to fit you. And a typical lot, we've got our, uh, what is this, a red and a green or yellow looking pipe for your front sight that can be replaced. And on the factory sight, it has a red that comes on it. And then our typical owner's manual kind of stuff with warranty card and a Springfield sticker and, and our owner's manual. Very important, especially for you folks if you've not dealt with, with this particular kind of firearm before. We're gonna give it a once over and, and give you some tips on, on taking it down and maybe uh, cleaning it and some of the features of it. So if you're shopping for a firearm, you might consider something like this. So uh, get all this stuff back in here and kind of get it out of my way so we can we can better deal with our space on the table real quick okay that's what comes in the magazine any typical safety flag always got to have that handy too okay and now let's flip that over out of the way for you and all right our xdm 10 millimeter mm, four and a half inch barrel we have some very nice serrations on here, very aggressive. I like the way that feels. And on this particular model with the uh, M, you have serrations in the front and the back for those guys that like to pinch it in the front and uh, operate the slide. Um, one thing I too is it, about the, the XD series with the grip tab safety, I really like that a lot. You have to have a grip on the gun for anything to operate. So even without pushing the, uh, the grip tab on the back, you cannot even operate the slide. So you have to have control of the firearm to be able to operate it. I like that a lot. All right, we're gonna pull our slide back here again, lock it in place, and you obviously see it, see it is empty since I've just pulled the safety flag out of it. Um, we have also in the front our Picatinny rail with several slots available for an optic uh, of some sort, laser, flashlight, that kind of thing, or laser flashlight combo. They're the best of both worlds there. We have some texturing on the front of the trigger guard for those of you that like to grip the front with your finger. Um, oh yeah, and our grip on both sides is ambidextrous control for your magazine release. So you've got a button on the right and the left side. Also, an indention on your grip frame with a thumb print here and also on the other side for those folks in the left-handed world. Yeah, and I know we have to keep Keep tabs on that because there's a lot of firearms that, that don't have that kind of feature and um, the left-handed folks favor the ones that are ambidextrous especially okay. anyway a good texturing grip on our frame and uh, feels good in the hand I've got a handful here for my size hand at least I won't say maybe average or typical for uh, um, for a male person but anyway you have also the slide release right there 
and this works as a slide release. Take the button and it, and it slams shut like it should. Like it should. So I know there are some firearms that uh, uh, that's not a slide release, but it's a slide latch, they call it. So you have to pull the slide back every time you want to release it. With this, when you slap the magazine in it when it's reloaded, hit the button and she's ready to go. Okay. Also, we have a feature of this firearm is our little indicator, striker indicator in the very back. That's the little tip sticking out. That tells you that the gun, the striker is cocked and ready to be fired. And along with that same philosophy, if I put a, put a 10 millimeter dummy round in it, and we'll show you what happens with the loaded chamber indicator. Okay, we have now a little, little flag sticks up on top right there, a little nub sticking up. That tells you there is a loaded or a cartridge, or at least a cartridge in the chamber. All right. So, and with that being said, since I've got it in there, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and stick the magazine in as if it were really loaded, ready to fire, and we'll do a trigger pull test on it just to see what it looks like. But I've not dealt with this gun at all yet. But with my my lever will handle around here so I can get a good grip on it. I'll just place a solid on the table. <clears throat> I'm gonna pull it straight back from up oh, and put my finger on the Grip tab safety again. You gotta make sure you got a grip on it for the gun to fire. And let's see what we have trigger pull wise. And five pounds, a little five, maybe five and a quarter or so. That's that's pretty good for a factory trigger, I guess, for for this type of firearm, striker fire gun. And that can be improved on a little bit, I'm sure, with a little bit of uh, spring manipulation, maybe some some polishing in some places. But honestly, if you're going to use this gun for a self-defense piece, you probably don't want it much lighter than that anyway. Now, if you're going to do a target kind of situation with it and you're going to use it in competition where you want to be as quick and, and smooth as you can, you may consider doing a little something to the trigger in this case. But, <clears throat> all right, that being said, we fired a gun, we've been out shooting it, and let's see what we have to do to get our cartridge out of it. See what we have to do to be able to unload it, and, or not, not unload it, but uh, <laughs> unload it always if you're going to clean it. But uh, what we gotta do to get it apart and do a pill strip on it and clean it. We like our slide back, all right? Then we have our slide release button here. We'll rotate this up in that case. All right. Then we're gonna let the slide release, slide release go and the slide will slide off the front. You don't have to pull the trigger with this one. But I like that feature. So, uh, pretty cool idea. Now we'll tell you that as far as the, the trigger on this thing, um, you know, work on all kinds of stuff here at Maverick Gun Works, and and uh, I love the gun itself. It operates very well. I've got I've one I've had for a very long time. It's real dependable. So far, it's not been an issue. But I will tell you, if you ever have uh, a situation that you think you want to work on the trigger mechanism in this gun, take it to a gun shop. Because I'm going to tell you, this this sucker is is complicated. It's real difficult to to get the pieces in and out of it. And if there's because of this, the extra safety's in it. Uh, it is a lot of springs and internal mechanisms that, um, honestly, for if you're not a gunsmith or not very familiar with this firearm, it can be a short of headache. Right. So, that being said, you can always clean out in here after you've shot it uh, with your typical solvents. Make sure it's a plastic safe solvent because this is a polymer frame. And then we'll come back with some couple drops of lightweight uh, gun oil, preferably synthetic, I always say, because they are. With modern technology, synthetic is not going to be as susceptible to changing temperatures. All right. And it will wear, wear better also as far as long-term wear resistance. Okay, and then we'll just fill strip and clean your slide and clean the barrel out. you got to be aware of that, guys, because this uh, is not a captured spring. You pop this guide rod loose, it, the spring will come out on you. So make sure you have a good grip on it. You push the thumb and forward pressure on your on your guide rod, push it up a little bit and make sure you have control of it because it's a rather stout spring. You see that? It is not captured. There's a lot of spring pressure here. So uh, be cautious of that. Don't let this thing smack you in the face or go flying across the room and hurt something else. Right. Mama wouldn't be happy if you if that got away from her or got away from you, rather, and hit one of her favorite dishes or something, you know, or a lamp fixture or whatever. And the typical, we pull our barrel up and we've got a barrel loose now. Right, now we can run our solvent through here it up a little bit and put some uh, solvent down through the barrel. If you shot it a whole lot, you may consider letting it soak, you know, for 10 minutes or so with, with hops number nine. 
and uh, come back with a brass brush to clean out any uh, carbon or or the uh, brass or copper from your uh, your from your bullets. And uh, we're gonna come back up here with again with our solvents and clean out the tracks um, on a slide. And here again, this slide is not as simple as a lot of them are as far as uh, the inner workings of it. Um, and again, if you need to uh, have a situation where you want to change any internal parts, uh, you really should consider taking it to a gunsmith shop because it's not uh, as easy as some of them are, uh, for example. But anyway, we're going to clean all the crud out of it uh, and come back with a clean, dry patch, make sure we've got all the dirt and grime out of it, and then a couple drops of, of synthetic lube or even some uh, synthetic grease possibly on the, in, the, in the track, in the grooves where your where your uh, slide tracks onto uh, the part of the frame here. A little bit of grease wouldn't hurt that, but uh, make sure it's not gooed up and even oil. Um, it's good best to get a few drops, spread it around, and then wipe it off with a thin film. If you got it wet too much, you'll end up just dirt sticking to it, and it's going to grind it up and make it make it wear faster. All right. Anyway, now since we've got the slides uh, stripped out here, we'll look at our sights. And this one is the white dots in the back, and you've got a fiber optic tube in the front, so you're able to get a pretty good sight picture there. Especially in daytime, that front sight's going to pop out at you. And you have the option, like we showed at the beginning, to, to change the tube on that, change the color of it, um, to whatever your preference may be. Or even light conditions may have a situation where uh, it works better for you in certain light conditions. Okay. All right, and we've got it cleaned up. Got some lube back on it. Let's uh, stick a barrel back in here. Easy enough, drop it right back in. in place here. I'll say it is now. I say it's easy and then me fumble with it. That's pretty cool, ain't it? <laughs> That's about typical. <laughs> Spring, guide rod, all right? A lot of tension, so pay attention there. Don't let it get away from you. Have a good grip on your slide. Push your, I like to put my hands over the spring a little bit. Because if it gets out of the out of the alignment here, it can definitely really can uh, get away from me and cause some damage. So we're going to push that forward with a thumb pressure and my finger, four fingers here, my other hand, my support hand, I guess you would say. I'm going to guide it into the recess on the nose, front of the frame, a little further, and we'll lock it into the barrel. Push it down, push it down. There you go. All right, just that easy. But really, be, be cautious of it. It is a you know, a loose spring with a lot of tension on it. And Ten millimeters going to be pretty good. Uh, you know, some stout cartridge to start with. Very uh, impactful when you pull the trigger. All right, get the kipper typical here. Put our slide back on. Maybe make sure we have it in line so that everything falls in place. I'm gonna pull it back. Lock our slide latch down and then rotate up, rotate forward the uh, uh, you slide lock bar there, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, now I can press my slide release and she's ready to roll again. Pretty cool. Anyhow, I like this gun y'all. It's uh, yeah, I can see this. Good grip on it, good size frame, four and a half inch barrel. Uh, it, Really good, uh, we'll say intermediate, um, as far as target shooting goes, but probably not one of your most economical. And then the 10 millimeter ammo is, is gonna be a little pricey, but then again, it is very much uh, uh, in favor as far as stocking power goes. Okay? You know, there's a lot of folks that uh, maybe go hog hunting, they go bear hunting, they like a gun like this, you've got a good, a good uh, powerful cartridge. If you have to have it up close and personal with a wild critter, um, this will definitely definitely uh, be to your advantage. So anyway, that's my take on this XDM 10 millimeter by Springfield. Uh, maybe we'll get a chance to go out and shoot it uh, before, uh, before long. But anyhow, thanks for watching. And uh, if there's something we can help you with uh, with firearms goes, uh, contact us at Maverick Gunworks.